In today's video, we're going to discuss the best tip at all, and that is just make something. While I will be talking primarily about games, this can be used in all creative endeavors and just in your life in general. Now, there are six key points we're going to be going through today. There's picking the right tools, what should I make, how long should I take, what shouldn't I do, what do I do with it, and where do I go from here? Stay tuned and we'll dig into it. Hey all, I'm Andrew from Stasis Booth Games. If you're new here, welcome. If you've already subscribed, welcome back. Now just make something. That is the key takeaway from this video. If you want to be a game developer, you want to be an artist, if you want to build birdhouses, you just need to get off your ass and actually make something. Well, make something and finish something. Now there's a lot of hindrances to you actually making and finishing. For instance, I've been working on a vertical slice for a game now for the past few months, and I just keep getting the urge to change engines. Do not do this if you're in the same position as I. Even if you've just started and been working for a couple of weeks, don't do this. Now switching engines is something that can be a good thing, you know? There's going to be a lot of outrageous features or amazing things you're going to see from Things like Unreal, hell even things from Unity, things that are done in Godot that you may really, really want to use. But you probably won't. And you're much better sticking off with the one you're using. So that's the way I'm thinking now. I just need to stick with it and just fight that urge. I know I won't change engines, but there's just some really nifty looking features <laughs> that I really, really like the look of. But anyway... Let's dig into this video. This is part of the whole indie devlog becoming an indie thing. And this one is all about just, just making something. And this should be like a little bit of a step-by-step -step guide on what you should be doing and how to go about making your game. All right, for the first step, we need to pick the correct tools. Now, the first one will be picking an engine, uh, something you're either familiar with or something that... No, something you're familiar with. <laughs> That's probably the best way to do it. If you've been using an engine for a while, keep using it. Now, those of you that aren't game developers or those of you that are really, really new, a game engine is something that it's just a series of tools that makes making games a lot easier. Now, I've used Unreal Engine 4 with full C++ backends. I haven't really touched the visual code side of things, but seems kind of cool. I've gone back to using Unity. That's what I used to always use back in the day. Back in like 2014, um, really aging myself now with this video. <laughs> but Unity is great. Uh, it's got C, C Sharp, which is a fairly easy to get into programming language. Um, once you do get a lot further into it, uh, there there is a lot to it. Um, I'm still fairly, <laughs> I've done it for so many years, I'd say I'm still at a basic level. So yeah, learn what you need to and go from there. Other options are Godot, which has a very big user base, and I just see all the time on Twitter, people are like, hey, I just started using Godot, I'm using Godot for this, I'm Godoting all over the place, and that's that's cool. I've never touched a thing, but it seems like there is a very supportive community, so if you're using that, or you're looking to use it for your first game, go for it. You can even jump into something such as Game Maker. Uh, very simple, I believe it's still just for 2D games. Uh, but it's got a very easy to learn language and it'll really bump up your skills in terms of learning logic and just the flow of programming. The next part of picking your tools is using asset packs. Now asset packs are just a collection of assets, 3D models, sound effects, images, whatever you may need that someone else has created that you can either get for free or you can purchase. Now asset packs, as I mentioned in the last video, were a very dirty word back in the day. Uh, because there was a lot of developers who had no skill downloading these packs, chucking it all together into something that looked absolutely trash. And um, yeah, releasing it to try and make a quick buck. Now that's not what we want to do. If you're using asset packs, make sure you are modifying them in a way that makes them either your own or making sure that you've got a really cohesive style. You don't want your asset packs to be releasing in a game that looks like this. You really want them to be looking like this, where everything just meshes together and works really, really well. It looks good, looks clean, and you're not gonna have a hundred people screaming directly at you that, hey, this looks like this asset pack. This is obviously an asset flip. 
This is one thing you really don't want to add onto your plate. Asset packs will dramatically reduce how long it takes you to make and finish a game. Uh, it'll make a two year game go down to a year. It'll make a year game go down to six months. Just use them. There's nothing wrong with it at all. The difference between these I just showed you is the one is a very coherent scene. It's been custom built using the assets to look cohesive and actually look decent. Whereas the other one is just something that was ripped straight from the demo scene and they've chucked a bunch of random models in that just do not fit with the pack they've purchased or gotten for free. Okay, so now we've picked an engine. We've found assets we can use. What should I make? Well, as I mentioned in a previous video, the best thing I'd say to do, well, there's a couple of ways you could do this. Uh, you could go back and look at other game jams that have already happened, take that idea and kind of just run with it for yourself for a week or so. But the other thing is to go back to like classic games that already exist. So you've got things like Frogger, you've got Arkanoid, you've got Pong, which I'd say leave that until you've done a couple first. There is a reason we'll get there in a sec. But just recreating things like Frogger and just making sure that you keep it very simple and give yourself a set time limit. You can give yourself two weeks if you're really uncomfortable, you could go up to a month. But I'd say keep it, you know, two weeks to a month per project, just getting the base mechanic in. You don't want it to look super pretty. You could just have it like blocks looking like this. Or you could just find some free assets, slap it in like a frog, some cars. What you don't want to do is get bogged down in things that don't really matter. So you will need to learn the animation scene, but you don't have to have the perfect animations on your frog for frogger for your one month project. You see where I'm getting at? It's not about perfection. It's about learning the skills and just getting stuff in there. So you've reached the two week period. You've reached the one month period, which is set for yourself to make these small games. What do you do? You stop. If you haven't finished it, stop. Okay, because what this is doing is each of these projects that you do is teaching you a little bit of time management, you're learning skills such as how to move game objects around, how to do things like score, how to do start and end states. And it's really good to just bump up those skills. Now, once you've done those, I'm looping around to the Pong thing here, maybe do Pong. The reason why Pong looks so simple, right? Pong looks amazingly simple and easy to replicate. It's just two boxes with a ball going between them. Now, if you want to do this really well, and why I would leave it for your third project, is that it's going to involve like a tiny little bit of artificial intelligence, unless you're just like playing with yourself on the keyboard. That sounded very wrong. Or unless you've got someone else in the house that, you know, you can play against. In which case, make Pong your first one. It's super simple. It's just bouncing a ball between two paddles. So now we're on to what shouldn't I do? Now we have kind of covered this a little bit in the previous sections here, but that's okay. We'll rehash some of it. So the first one is you shouldn't hope to make money from this. This is strictly a learning experience and you're going to be putting it onto various websites, not for sale, just something free that people can download. Really just, yeah, don't think about money. Just think about having fun. Think about learning some skills and just enjoy the process. Another thing you shouldn't do is over scope your game. So scope is literally what the game is going to entail. And you'll get to a point where you'll be like, hey, I can add this little feature. I can add this little feature. And that's feature creep, which will blow your scope way out of the water and make it take 10 times longer than it should. So keep it very simple. Write down exactly what the core mechanics are. I need to move frog A to point B. I need to make sure there's cars going by that could hit the frog and cause an end state. Keep it simple. Don't add anything. And another thing is I've told you to make some small games. Don't go into this thinking of making a dream game. Go into it with these simple projects in mind and just make those and just have fun. So yeah, keep the size in check. Don't overscope. All right. So how long should this whole process take? We've talked about doing two week to one month games. And that's really good, but you're probably asking how long is it going to take me to become a developer and I can make something I really want to make. Don't think about it. 
okay? Don't go into this thinking that it is a very dark thought path to go down because you'll hit the point where you're like, hey, I'm making these two to one month games. I've got to make three of them. I've got to then, you know, start learning extra skills and then doing this. And the buildup of time in your mind is you're thinking way too far in the future. You should seriously just be enjoying the process and thinking that right now I'm working towards my dream and just enjoy it. Any thoughts you have that, hey, this is taking too long, no. Center yourself in the moment, enjoy the ride, and just start making stuff. Oh, show me in the comments what you can make. I'd really love to see it. <laughs> All right, so you've made a game. You've made a Pong clone. You've made a Frogger clone. What do you do with it? Okay, so the big thing about developing is don't live in a vacuum. Every couple of days, just post something to Twitter like, hey, I did this cool thing. Hey, I learned this. Something. Start building your audience early. It may not seem exciting to you that, hey, you've just created the clone of a game from the 70s or 80s but whatever people love to see a journey and eventually you'll start building an audience and people will start rooting for you and be really excited to see what you're working on so these games are most likely gonna they're just gonna be clones and then when you do start making a few little ones of your own again keeping in that month they're probably gonna be crap okay <laughs> and i say that with love Okay, they're going to probably be crap, but another thing you're doing with these games is you're starting to get feedback. Now, feedback comes both negative and positive, and there's a whole other video in the pipeline about what that does to you mentally. But what we need to do is you need to start building a little bit of that thick skin. Like, people are going to have complaints. People are going to say things about your game like, hey, this doesn't look good, or this could be better. Listen to it. Just kind of learn to let it flow off your back because otherwise later it's just going to completely destroy you and you need to build that thick skin early so that's what i did um i many many years ago i started making little games showing them off to people and then in 2021 i made and released seventh chance now this was a short game it did get some negativity it did get a lot of positivity but it was a very big learning experience for myself and the point of it wasn't to make money it was to start building that audience, which hopefully works out well for the new game I'm releasing soon. All right, so we've, we've done all that. What do you do next? What do you move on to? Next, you will start something bigger. Now, I'm not talking an MMO which combines Zelda and Mega Man because that's 100 plus people and a $50 million budget. At minimum. You need to keep going small for now. You've made a couple of small games. You can either keep copying just to increase and learn your skills, and also you'll see the ways the game mechanics are done and you can be like, hey, I could do this slightly differently myself and it'll be a really cool game of my own. So just keep small. Keep playing around with game mechanics, coming up with core game mechanics, just cool things that the player will be doing minute to minute. It could be really, really fun. Just start experimenting, making small ones, releasing them on itch.io for people to play and keep getting that feedback. You may come up with a really cool small game idea that just catches on, both for you and the audience. You never know what'll happen. Keep them small, fail fast if they're crap. Just keep going small. Once you've done three to four small little projects and release them on itch, then you can also start thinking bigger. But again, don't overscope, don't go for your dream game. Write your dream game down in a journal, put it to the side, and come back to it when your skills are a lot better or when you've actually formed a team and you've actually got the resources to do so. And yeah, just another quick thing. By releasing these small games, you're really learning a lot about time management skills, where you need to improve them. And most importantly, you've learned what it feels like to release a game to an audience. And releasing a game feels freaking fantastic, I can assure you. All right, so this bit is probably what you're all here for, and it's my dev update. So this week's been a mixture of productive and unproductive, um, and it's <laughs> it's been a really interesting time. You can tell what I've been struggling with from the titles of the previous videos. There's bugs, there's motivation, and things are getting better. The main push for me at the moment is to get the store page up, to start getting the wish lists in, and that's really progressing well i've got the voice acting for the trailer done 
I'm waiting for the final mix of the music on the trailer. I've done the final cut of the content for the video itself. And once that's up, the Steam page can basically just go live. It's sitting in review process at the moment, which is really exciting. Uh, fingers crossed before next week's video, I can actually put the announcement trailer up, link the store page, and then talk about the reaction that we're getting in the next week's video. I'm super excited about it. So I was saying at the start of this, this monologue, I was feeling productive and unproductive. And the unproductive feelings I'm getting is just that I haven't had as much time to actually dig fully into the game at the moment. Just because I'm working on so many different things, organizing contracts for voice acting, organizing everything for the sound design, and just getting the trailer cut itself, getting the Steam page written and prepped and looking and smelling nice and fresh and clean for people to uh, be interested in it. But yeah, I have done a little bit of game stuff. I've just been reworking the lighting in a lot of areas just because I wanted the screenshots to look good. Uh, you can see the difference here in the mess hall. Um, this is the before, this is the after. I think it's really dramatically improved the feeling of that area. And that lighting change has gone through all the other areas as well. It just feels really nice to me. So what are the next steps for me? Keep working on the vertical slice. I really need to get the 15 minutes gameplay completely polished, the demo ready, um, and then start contacting publishers and other funding options. Now, the funding is extra that allows for full voice acting and sound design, like a full custom made soundtrack. The game, no matter what, will be released. I can fund basically everything myself. It's not a very costly game. It's only when I start putting in full custom soundtracks and full voice dialogue, that's where it becomes a problem. But I've got plans for that, so no stress. No matter what, the game is coming out. All right, I think that about finishes the video for today. So remember, make something, anything, okay? Make a birdhouse if you want, but really, you're probably here just for me to chat about games. Make small games. Make a clone of Frogger in two weeks. Send me a link on Twitter or comment it in the comments here. I'll check it out and just start getting stuff out there. Pick your engine and just enjoy the process. You don't want this to be stressful. There will be times in your journey where it is stressful. Uh, I've experienced that firsthand in the past couple of weeks, but just enjoy it. It's still, it's potentially early days for you, or you might've been a dev for a long time and you're just trying to reignite that spark and get things made and get things finished. So yeah, make some small games, send me some links. I really want to check it out. As always, I'm Andrew from Stasis Booth Games. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't liked this video, please do. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, leave me a comment down below, say hi, and if you'd like to, just click the link in the description, join the mailing list so you don't miss anything. Until next time, stay indie.